value added tax that is uh, VAT. So VAT is to be applicable on the taxable supply by our taxable person. So if a taxable person and taxable person might be an individual or a company is uh, uh, is dealing with taxable supply, then uh, VAT is applicable. But uh, in order to apply VAT, the taxable person must be a tax registered person with HMRC. Otherwise, if a business or a person is not tax registered, he or she or the business cannot charge uh, VAT from its customers. So VAT is usually applied on goods and services. So this is a type of tax that is applicable on the provision of goods and services. Now, as far as the uh, supply is concerned, I, I was just mentioned that uh, I had mentioned that the supply is goods and services. So as far as the supply is concerned, there are uh, three types of supplies. Number one is uh, standard rated goods and services, zero rated goods and services and exempt supply. Now, what is the difference between these uh, uh, three types of supplies? Uh, first of all, a few examples in exempt supply. Uh, usually it is applicable on land, postal services, financial services, education and insurance. And as far as zero rated supplies are concerned, children, clothing, books, medicine, transport, exports outside EU countries and all other covered under the other than that. Uh, 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 it will be covered in the standard rated goods and that that will be provided you in an exam question. So uh, as far as the rates are concerned, exempt is outside the scope of VAT, zero rated is having a zero rate. And as far as the standard rated is concerned, so there is a, a rate of 20% and sometimes there is a reduced rate of 5% applicable on selected items. Now, input and output tax or input and output VAT. Now, as far as the input VAT is concerned, that input VAT is uh, applicable on purchases. For example, if a business purchase goods from another business, then the purchaser has to pay input tax. And uh, if that purchaser is tax registered, then the business can claim back this VAT paid, that is refundable amount. So. Input tax is usually refundable. In some cases, that input tax might not be refundable. And as far as output is concerned, so output is applicable on sales. So if business sales goods and services, then an output tax charge is applicable. And it is payable to HMRC. That means output tax is a liability. So for example, a business is uh, selling, uh, say suppose the standard rated supplies, and uh, input tax paid on the standard rated supplies is 20,000. And uh, output charged to the customer and that is 35,000. So we'll find out the net balance. If output is greater than the input, then this is the tax payable or uh, net payable. This is tax payable to HMRC. So we can say that uh, if uh, output is greater than input, it will results in a payable and vice versa. If input is greater than output, then it will be a receivable. Now, as far as uh, the registration is concerned, so a question come in the mind that uh, when a business is able to charge VAT. So there are some conditions for that. Uh, every business is not allowed to charge VAT from the customer in order to charge VAT. The business must be a registered business. So if a business is not registered, uh, the business will only charge the price. And if the business is registered, then the business, business will charge the price plus VAT and that becomes the price that the customer has to pay. But if a business is not registered business, then the business will only charge the price that is 100 rupees. So if 20% is the rate, so the price would be now 120. 
So that means if a person is selling goods with VAT, then the price is usually high. But the 20 that has been charged by the seller, it is to be paid to the HMRC. But fine. Now, when a business has to register, and what are the benefits of registration? This is very important. So first of all, there is a, a, a compulsory type of registration, and one is the voluntarily registration. A business without any condition can register itself uh, as a voluntary VAT registered business. But as far as the compulsory VAT registration is concerned, uh, there are two types of tests. One is called the historical test, another is called the future prospect test. If any of that text, uh, if any of that test has been passed, then the business has to be registered compulsory. And uh, when it, it is being registered, the business will start charging VAT from customers on goods and services. Now let's see what is the historical test. Now, as far as historical test is concerned, uh, what we have to say in a given month, we have to look back last 12 month of trading and identify the taxable supply. Or if the business has just started, then in any given month, check the, from the commencement date up till the current month, if uh, whatever is shorter period. So assuming businesses uh, started few years ago, and now you are checking that, uh, for example, it is the month of December uh, 2018. So look back uh, 12 months. So you can say that uh, you will see from December 2017. Onwards, you will see that uh, uh, if there is any uh, taxable supply. So what, what is taxable supply? So taxable supply means uh, standard rated goods and services and zero rated exempt will not be covered under taxable supply so if taxable supply exceed 85000 pound for the last 12 month of trading then the business must be considered as a registered business and business has to be registered compulsory from the date and if that threshold has not been met then we have to wait for the next month and then you will try the same uh, mechanism in the next month, look back last 12, 12 months and so and so on. So if that threshold has been exceeded in, this, in the current month, that is in December, then you have to notify HMRC within 30 days of the end of the month in which the threshold is exceeded. And registration will be mandatory from the first day of the second month. That, that is after the notification period uh, from the first day you have to register and you will start charging VAT on the sale of goods and services. For example, say suppose the month of uh, threshold meeting uh, in the month that threshold has been met is April and uh, 30 days is uh, like uh, 30th May till 30th May there is a notification period and from 1st June 18 the registration is mandatory or compulsory now you have to charge VAT from the customers so that was a, a historical test in which we'll look back the period and uh, check the taxable supply now as far as another method is concerned uh, but one one thing more uh, in the uh, historical test, if uh, that test, test has been uh, passed or a threshold is being exceeded, still sometimes you not, don't need to register if you expect that the next 12 month taxable supply will be below the deregistration limit that is 83,000 pound. Then what you have to do, one uh, historical test has been passed but the future outlook says that your sales will be less than 83,000. Then there is no need to be compulsory registered. You might be uh, try voluntary, regist voluntary registration, but compulsory registration is not needed now. So in uh, the historical test, once you have to look back 12 months and then you have to look forward for 12 months and then decide whether you will be uh, able to register or not. Now, as far as the future test is concerned, 
in the case of this future test you have to see that the taxable supply of the next 30 days exceeded 85000 or not so if we see that the taxable supply of the next month the next 30 days will exceed by 85000 then you have to be compulsory registered as per future test and you have to notify hmrc within 30 days so the 30 day criteria is same for that but the registration will start from the beginning of the month from which the criteria has been satisfied so if criteria uh, that you are looking for is in the month of july then 30 day period is still uh, august but you have to start your registration from july